Um, good morning. Uh, my name is Lam Vu from uh, a director of, of engineering for the design center in uh, Plano, Dallas, uh, Texas. And uh, today I would like to talk to you a little bit of a problem that we encounter with the PFC in our system. Okay. In a PFC, I mean, in, in a um, large power system where there are, mo there are a large number of power supply that sit together, the, the problem is that, you know, in many of these um, data centers, they would have um, the mains power system and then a backup system. And these backup system sometimes are made out of, are run by generator. And you know that the generator, um, be, the characteristic of the generator will sometimes cause uh, some problem. I mean, because in a PFC, it, let take a look at um, the, how the generator react with the different type of load. When the load is um, in line with the, with the current, then the current in the load itself will not affect the um, excitation um, fuel of the generator. But if the load is either uh, capacitive or inductive, and the current is 90 degree out of phase with the voltage, then this current will uh, interfere with the excit excitation field of the generator. For a lagging um, current, I mean inductive current, then the fuel generated by the load will reduce the amount of excitations of the, um, of the of the uh, voltage controller. But if the current is leading with the capacitive, then the current, then the fuel generated by this current will reduce the amount of excitation on the uh, control winding. So in case of a capacitive case, you know, the because the fuel, the excitation fuel, they increase, so the generator need to reduce its own control so that to bring the voltage down. But there's always, when it get down to zero, then this, the controller has no other mean to correct the voltage anymore. And then the voltage keep rising up and it had to shut down and lead to instability of the system. Okay. So for, a PFC, the PFC main purpose is actually is to shape the current to follow the um, input voltage. But these PFC, the single-ended PFC, cannot, doesn't have any capabi capability to generate either the um, inductive current or capacitive current because there's no way that this PFC can operate in uh, quadrant two and four. So that means there's no other way that the PFC can compensate for the capacitive current that is there because of the X cap that we need to use for the EMI purpose, okay? So for, an, for a newer PFC topology, in a bridgeless uh, PFC, the diode is still there. Uh, so that means these bridgeless PFC still cannot operate in quadrant two or quadrant four. So that means there's still no way to compensate for the capacitive current in the X cap. Okay. Then there's a different topology that also very popular these days is the totem pole PFC. Okay. So in this case, 
there is a possibility that the PFC can generate the either inductive or capacitive current, then there is a chance that it can compensate for the EMI X cap current. Okay. But there is very, there is other um, factor, design factor that you have to take in, into account here is that with the totem pole PFC, the main purpose of it is try to get the efficiency as high as possible. So because of that, the switching um, pattern of the totem pole is switching as a single-ended PFC. So that means that mean one side of it will run a slow switching in the 50 hertz or 60 hertz pattern, while the other side run at high switching frequency. So by doing that, the efficiency is better, but you still cannot generate the, um, the capacitive or the inductive current. So that means whatever you try to have to compensate for the X cap is still not there. Okay. And the second problem is that, you know, if you run a one power supply on the line, I mean, so the, the input voltage will be smoothly. Okay. But you've got more and more units that connect very close to each other while the supply is far away. If there is uh, any kind of inductance in the way, which there is because of uh, of the transformer impedance of the distance from the feed to the power supply. So there's always some interaction between the power supply that causing small ripple at the switching frequency between power supply. So that type of ripple will prevent you to be exact, to determine exactly where the zero crossing is. So that will make it difficult for you for us to determine are we on the positive side or are we on the negative side of the, of the sine wave. So because of that, we will have to have a little gap at the zero crossing so that we don't, uh, we don't switch the slow switch on the wrong side of the sine wave, which can cause a very big spike of current going through the devices and cause failure, okay? So how do we resolve all of this problem? So at LIDON, we have, uh, we implement the switching at different area of the sine wave differently. So during the, for, during the positive or a negative cycle, we run at a single-ended PFC to have the best efficiency as possible. But at the edges, when we go in through zero crossing, so around the edges, around three to 400 microseconds there, we change the switching to a bipolar type so that we can build the current through the zero crossing without worrying about, you know, are we detect the positive and the negative cycle correctly or not? And then when we go through that area, we go back to single-ended uh, PFC. And now we can switch in through the whole cycle smoothly and we'll be able to generate a current that is 90 degree uh, delay to compensate for the X cap that in the system. And by doing that, we can have a PFC that truly PFC in the sense that it shape the current and it also bring the power factor as close to one as possible to account for the uh, capacitive current of the X cap. So you are welcome to come to us at the booth and take a look at what we have. And, and that is my presentation and thank you for, for attending. All right.